Hello the Darkness 344 here and in today's video I'll be basically going over how to build a simple modulo N counter. First of all what is a modulo N counter? Over here we have a, a simple incrementer counter and which counts from 0 to 15 as it's a 4-bit counter. However say um, we wanted to count up to a different number say 0 to 10 for instance then we have to use a modulo modulo n counter and they're, they're basically a counter uh, which who's, where the values will wrap around back to zero when it reaches um, the, the value n which is the n in modulo n counter um, so say for a, a zero to ten counter once the counter reaches ten it'll wrap around all the way back to zero so over here of course a, a simple four bit counter like this once it reaches 15, if you clock it again, uh, it'll go all the way back around to zero. So, how do we make this, um, say, 4-bit counter only count up to 10, for instance? Well, it's actually relatively simple. So, you, you can really use any counter you want. You can use a, a, an up counter or a down counter. I'm just using this quite simple solid-state counter design. I can't exactly remember who it was by. But uh, if, if I can find it, I will link it down in the description below. And I'll probably have to make a tutorial of one one day. <laughs> but yeah, so I, over here we have the output. And we have an additional piece of circuitry over here. Just to make sure that we don't get like overlapping numbers. So sometimes this counter from when it goes from 1 to 2, it's, it will display the number 3 for a brief second. And, and we just don't really want this. So the, the way... Um, let's for for instance, let's um, make this four bit counter only go up to the number ten. Well, actually, we want it going from zero to nine, and then it will reset on ten and go all the way back to, down to zero. So here's our output, and first of all, we uh, work out our number in binary. So the number ten uh, would be one zero one zero, uh, with the most significant bit on the left. And the least significant on the right, of course. Then, then we can go down like this. And all we're doing is basically building an AND gate between all the different um, uh, numbers. All the, all the different uh, binary digits to, that make up our number. So, uh, the binary digit 8 and the binary digit 2 make up the number 10. So, then we've basically created an AND gate. So, as you can see... When 8 and 2 are on, uh, we get out a 1. But when any other number is on, we, we'll get out a 0. So now we can hook this up to the reset line of our counter. And you preferably want this delay to be as, as little as possible. So when you do make this section, you want it as close as to the counter reset as possible. Or else you have your counter will be kind of slow. So once we've done this... Um, let's just go test it. So to speed this up, I'm actually going to start from the number 7. And that will just make it so I don't have to press the button as many times. So as we can see, we have the number 7. And each time we increment it, it will go up by 1. So 7, 8, 9. And then, of course, once we hit 10, it should reset all the way back down to 0. So 10, and it resets down to 0. So as you can see, that 10 only appeared for a brief second, but um, in an ideal world, you wouldn't have that appear at all. So the way you could do this is, um, I guess you could use a synchronous counter or synchronize the outputs at the end by just having a little logic to output um, after uh, the time it takes for that 10 to this or the number to disappear. So, um, of course, you can modify this. So. It's only displaying, it only goes up to 10, well 9 at the moment, but of course you can change this to whatever as long as you put it all through an AND gate. So, um, this also works for down counters as well. So I'm just going to modify this up counter into a down counter. And a simple way of doing this, um, actually, you know what, I can just do it. Um, I can do it like this, I think. No, um, this will work much easier. So normally um, you'd have to rebuild this counter, hooking up um, 
your your outputs different i mean the the you have to hook up the counter a bit differently to turn it into a down counter but one quick trick to make a up counter into a down counter is just to invert the outputs so as you can see um we're inputting zero but we get 15 as an output and then we count up by one and we get 14 because it's, it's decremented over here so now of course um say we want this um, to reset on the number 10 we can pop 10 in like this so in, instead of resetting on 0 we're resetting on 10 so it, it can work for both up and down counters so so 15 14 13 then we get the number 12 11 now when we hit 10, as we can see, I haven't built it long enough, so there we go. <laughs> Once we hit 10, we reset back to 15. So that's that's the way you could use it for a decrementer as well. So the real reason we use these is for if we're working with, um, say, a decimal or something. So if we want the counter to go from 0 to 9 instead of um, 0 to 15, and it's just quite useful for different things. Maybe you want to, to make a sequence generator and you only have like um, nine steps in your sequence or something that's not um, represented by an exact one on like, um, yeah, an exact value uh, using binary digits. Then of course you'd want to use a modulo and counter. So yeah, I hope this uh, kind of cleared it up. Please like and subscribe and I'm out.